So how many of you remember that advert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many of you thought Vuya actually existed? So I saw the advert, like many of you, for over a period of time, and I thought, wow, I wonder if Vuya really exists. And I googled only to find out it was just a figment of an imagination of some Cape Town guy smoking some green stuff at a creative agency. So Vuya didn't exist. So I promptly trademarked it, and from that day onwards, I became Vuya. The interesting thing is, you know, as far as I can remember, um, my mom always said to me, don't be an also ran in life. Go out and change the world. And I remember thinking to myself, Lay off me, woman. I'm only three years old. <laughs> but the truth is, I often get asked as to why did I do it? Because a lot of people saw the same advert, but they didn't do anything about it. So I think one of the key things for me was that inspiration was one of those things. That advert inspired me to do something about it, and therefore I created a business out of it. And it was very interesting because... You know, I came from an IT background, and there I found myself in a totally different business doing food. And it started like in the slide here behind you. We started at the local Four Ways Farmer's Market selling Borovos rolls on the food store. So if an entrepreneur or anybody came up to me and said, well, it's hard to take an idea into inception, I would tell them, well, you know, it isn't really. It's just all in your head. You just got to start. And half the time, people have made these things into bigger than they are in their heads, and that kind of paralyzes them from actually doing something. So what I did in any natural way, if you want to eat an elephant, I took small bites. I started small. I got the branding. I, bought a, I got a local stand. It cost me 300 rands a weekend, and I started. And that's Peter. I'm going to tell you a quick story about Peter. So we got that stand, and we were at the local forest farmer's market. It was a trestle table, wooden trestle table, plastic shade netting, and wood chips on the floor. And we got a grill on a wooden table. Not a good idea. <laughs> we soon found out in week four. We went that dumb. We put a concrete slab between the grill and the wooden table. Except in week four, Peter forgot to put the concrete, ta- uh, the concrete slab. All of a sudden, he turns around to me and says, Hey, but we're on fire. I go, like, I know. Look at the queue. I'm thinking, yes! <laughs> Except the table was actually on fire and the shade netting was melting. So... If you're ever going to be an entrepreneur or you're going to take an idea from inception into, uh, or from conception into inception, you're going to have to put out a number of fires, I can assure you. So we didn't set out to start a business and be at the local for his farmer's market. We had bigger dreams than that. We're Voyo, big, big dreamer. So we thought, let's put up a restaurant. <laughs> Good idea. So we eventually got an amazing site opposite Vitz University. After giving the landlord our DNA and every other sample that they needed to give us the site, um, we eventually got it. The interesting about that site is that how we launched it, being an IT geek, was like, how do I tell the world, hello world, we have arrived? So we got four snow machines and we made it snow. And it was really, really cool on the day. And we had a lot of guests and it was full and it was pumping. Except on, day numbers, uh, on the next day, on the 26th of December, which is ironically the dumbest time to launch a restaurant, there was not a single customer at the restaurant. In fact, the tables were lily white, almost like corporate South Africa. <laughs> and there I am. And there I am sitting there by myself thinking, oi, <laughs> what have I done? So I decided to pick up the phone and I called the Sunday Times and I said, would you be interested in hearing about how we made it snow in the middle of an African summer? They weren't really interested. So I decided to write the story, typeface it, PDF, put the picture and emailed it back to the reporter, who then called us back about a half an hour later with a smirk in his voice, asked us a couple more questions. And before we knew it, the next thing we found ourselves on the front page of the Sunday Times. And that taught me one of the most important lessons, uh, and that is, Journalists often write about the negative stories because the good stories never land on their laps. It's easy to write about in Kandla because guess what? It just lands on your lap. So we learned a lot of things. And that single stroke of whatever got us so many media um, um, publicity that, you know, we ended up even meeting Richard Branson. Uh, That's a Richard Branson to you, Rich to me. (laughs) And uh, he even offered to invest in our business. So in short, what my lessons are is that you can take an inspirational idea, which is the what. The purpose is why we do what we do. That's is something I would really like to share with you, and the how. And I think you'll learn the hows in my story as I tell it to you and your team. I look forward to working with you. Thank you.